Hello, everyone, and welcome to Yakuza Man, the podcast. I'm Sabo. Wait a second. Wait a minute. <laughs> but I'm Sabo. No, no, no. I'm Sabo. Then who am I? Can I be Spartacus, oh. then? You're good. No, I'm sorry. But you just said you were Dan? That. Does that does that make me Dan? Does that mean I have to play a game I can't see? <laughs> it's okay. No, no, but I will tell you that this podcast has been um, obtained and taken over by the Plant Gang. So, um, sorry. Plant. Oh. The Plant Gang now uh, owns this uh, podcast. Oh no. So, how far have you got into Kingdom Hearts Three, Sabo? Um, I, I I only finished the Rapunzel world and then I had to stop again. So yeah, I think, I think you're, you're you're probably going to beat me. You seem to be moving at a much faster pace, even though I got the game like a day before you did. What well, a few hours, really? Well, well you're true. both moving at a faster pace than I am. It's just because. So I found that's I the joke. Found out. That's the joke, Sabo. I don't I have the game. So I found out that the uh, since they recreate the entire Let It Go sequence from Frozen in the in game engine, yeah. What they also do is they recreate the animation goo from that sequence. Good. Well, I know they hey. recreated the uh, the one scene of like uh, Rapunzel running around the tree with her hair. Yes. Yeah. They re they, yeah they recreated that entire scene except it occasionally cuts to Sora looking confused. Like Sora also, I was really. Also, I was well. No, it's because she does a whole thing like before she even notices they're there. Even though the scene apparently takes place over the course of several hours, as it goes from sunny to, to dark to sunny to dark, because you know that's the joke, I guess, in the movie. I haven't actually seen Tangled, so this was all very new to me. But yeah, that was the joke in the movie. Tangled was pretty good, though. Yeah. I'm glad that they decided to keep the the Elsa hair, hair clip English. That's great. It's kind of one of those things where, you know, I guess the joy of this game is you're never, of these games, is you're never sure what's a stroke of genius or just a fucking mistake. That's honestly very true. And now we're ASMR. Thank you, Sabo. You're welcome. But yeah, it's uh, been an interesting time. But you know the game looks good. I'll uh, get it probably sometime. I will later. say, no matter, even though I'm as far as in as I am, I've still not reached any of the really stupid shit. But there's That's this black until the end. So. There's this black box thing everyone's looking for, and I just know it's, it's going to be the, you, the usually, stupidest shit. Usually they get dumb either towards the end or like you get, or like towards the middle is when you start seeing some of the dumb. And then oh, I know, there's like... one dumb thing that's happened, but I can't say because it's kind of a spoiler about Riku. Oh, oh okay. Um, I mean, I wouldn't care, but we're in recording. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be that guy. Oh my god, with the spoilers, pe people are so freaking driving me insane. Like, no, <coughs> like, no everybody is like, treating this like it's the holy grail in terms of security. Like, nobody wants to know anything, nobody wants to talk about anything. Everyone is just like, so I got Kingdom Hearts 2, you spoil me, I'll kill you. Like, what, what happened to, like, let's let's enjoy the game and have fun. Why is everyone so obsessed with being spoiled? Because everyone wants to know how this dumb shit story is going to fucking end, or the Xehanort saga is going to close out. I mean, I'm going to yeah, say that, it again. I, mean... I know I said it before, and I think even recording, that no matter how this story ends, Potato Chip Man, um... This is going to end with a lot of people, like, pissed probably. off, I got a feeling. Probably. Yeah. I mean, if people... I mean, as I said, surely everyone has gone in with this thinking, oh, they're all looking... Oh, they're all talking about this black box now that was in that stupid fucking browser-only game. I mentioned oh, is that, that. What that is? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's that same... I'm pretty sure it's that same box that Lucio has told you gotta to run around with this and also have this key blown with my eye in it pass that down to people so I can see the future oh is that why there's an eye on it too yes oh, I didn't know any of them. oh wow oh wow so, that guy really what oh man I, I, I get I wonder if the spoilers I accidentally read are true you know what it is I know what it is this is, is like, like a, a major part of the game revolves around stuff from that stupid mobile game that nobody yes. hold on hold on hold on a sword with an eye in it Ooh. 
I know it. I know. I know how this ends. This is a precursor to Soul Calibur. Uh, Soul Calibur makes way too much sense. Fuck, you're right. Also, not enough to do about hearts. In darkness. Oh, that reminds me. In that vi video I showed you, the Jim Sterling one, I like how he doesn't get that. That the when they say darkness and heart, they're talking about like an actual thing in the series. Like yeah, like, but I didn't watch it because it's Jim Sterling. I'll be yeah, honest. Yeah, no, that's that's completely fair. But I wanted to make fun of that because it's like he's like uses thesaurus for other words other than heart and darkness. It's like that's what it's called. That'd be like me like if we were talking about Dragon Ball and we kept saying Saiyan. If like like someone popped in and said, "Hey, use a different word for Saiyan." Like talking. <laughs> Explaining. Like vegetable person. The space warriors. The space marines. Wait, no, that's a different thing. You can't do that. Oh, my see. space pod. Oh, my space armor. Oh, my space lance. Space uh, lance. Good old Tekka man. I love space lance. No, Billy. Giant buzz saws. Seriously, if you guys. I pause this video. Go look, look Tekken Man English. It's so fucking funny. I swear, there's not a script. <laughs> they just got the guy. Some like hobo came in and just started just talking over the footage. And they're like, "Fuck it, <laughs> that's the show now." <laughs> Billy. No, his his name is Tatsukara. Billy. Uh, all right, he's Billy now. I'm pretty sure that's how um um what's his name Yuri Lanfield gets what or got what for Spider Man. <laughs> he yeah, just uh, shows yeah, he up. Just, he just people say he just shows up in the recording, like with the, the guys tied up. He's like, "Hey guys!" Now he was in I one did, of I... the. Now he was in one of the objectively best games of 2018. Oh, I wonder if that means he'll get even more expensive now, like Troy Baker was. It's okay. They didn't win. They, they, all the awards were given the Red Dead, that overrated game, and then nobody's playing Red Dead anymore. Yeah, because it's a fucking overrated piece of shit. Just like the original Red Dead. Yeah, I would say Red Dead 1 was overrated. Red Dead 2 is definitely overblown. They both are. Honestly, Red Dead 1 controls like crap and 2 looks like it controls worse. I mean, it's one of the problems where you map everything to one button. Like Kingdom Hearts does. Oh my god. Uh, that was That's my one major complaint with the gameplay. Everything is mapped to the triangle button and like if you're not if if you if you don't like pay close attention to what's going on on the screen and there's already a ton of the shit on the screen to begin with then you'll pick the wrong like finisher or one point i tried to open a treasure chest and i instead like wasted my saved up finisher on it which also no. didn't open the chest by the way is it as bad to say like um i don't remember if god of war did it but i remember sonic uh unleashed did this where you'd have to kill the monster using a finisher move and you fucked it up they get all their health back no, it's not that bad. I mean, uh, it's not that bad. It's just that you, you'll have to you'll build up a finisher using a combo, but then you could accidentally waste it trying to use something else. Ah. Or you try, or you go to use the finisher at the exact moment the party member decides to use a special attack, and then you use that instead. Because it literally, something else. I don't know how to trigger it. Sometimes, like, the guys will just be like, "Hey, let's use our combination attack," but like, it just seems to trigger at random. All of a sudden, Goofy's like, "Hey, I'll jump on my shield and I'll and throw me into the air and I'll dive bomb the guys." I think my favorite thing from what I've heard from my friend playing, like just Goofy lines. I like how Goofy is just a straight man. Goofy is the still... smartest member of the group somehow. Like, I like to imagine Goofy like sits there at night going, "You know, I used to be the funny one. Why did this happen to happen to me?" This is bullshit. Where's my uh, my agent? Max, we're getting out of here. I'm supposed to be the one making jokes. <laughs> Goofy makes plenty of jokes. It's just he's surrounded by two actual jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't I be on a team with one of the other Keyblade users? Seriously, this guy's an idiot. Um, because, Mick, because Mickey's a psychopath. Of course I am. <laughs> he just lets things happen. And then conveniently forgets about them. Well, I could have saved. I could have saved Aqua. Riku but, is just oh, weird, oh, okay? Save Aqua or not save Aqua? Hmm. He wants to see how things play out. What if Mickey's the true final boss? What if Mickey is Xehanort? 
It's too late! I am already Norton! Who do you think Norton Xehanort? But yeah, that Norton stupid Zeo. mobile game was actually important because... Oh, great. They, I know who did it. I know because they had... I'll just explain to Sabo because I doubt he's going to go watch the movie now. So in that like stupid mobile game, they were like set before the first Keyblade War. There were like, there was this super master of all masters who was this like wise guy cracking jokes and wearing a black black cloak because fuck you. Of course he is. And he was like, okay, I'm going to train up six apprentices and I'm going to give five of those apprentices a book that tells the big that tells them the future. But the last page is that there was a big Keyblade War and Darkness won. Probably shouldn't have told him that part. And then, it, and then he gave, but we gave one of them a page that said, and then one of you betrayed them, betrayed all the others, and that led to big Keyblade War, and that's when Darkness won. So they and, spend the whole game being like, "I'm Judas." No, you're Judas. And Which one of us is the Judas here? And then his sixth apprentice, Lushu, he gave uh, the Keyblade that Xehanort has with his eye in it. So, which, as long as he passed that Keyblade down from master to apprentice. He could see the future, so which what let him write the Book of Prophecies in the first place, and also he gave him a big black box he had to carry and hide. That's what, that's what that stupid box is about. So, and even then, they didn't know they didn't say what was in the box. Just here's a box. It's important. Don't look inside it. It's not Pandora's box because they already found that. Oh yeah, they found that and then got rid of it. Yeah, like so it's like hey, like hey, is this this thing that Zeus buried on Earth? It's called Pandora's box. Is this what we're looking for? No. Oh, okay, and he just throws it away. Fucking maybe, Pete. Maybe Pete. Pete. Maybe you shouldn't have done that. Well, that's how God of War is started. Because Pete just threw away Pandora's box. Yeah. So Kratos had to fight, go back and find it. Pete, start, Pete. Pete is the reason we've had Kratos for like ten years. I'm the reason I can't do a Pete voice, damn it. No <laughs> one can. Gonna... Only Jim Cummings can. Only Jim Cummings can. When Jim Cummings passes away, it's gonna be a sad day because they're not gonna be able to find a new Pete. When Corey Burton passes away, like basically lose half of the Kingdom Hearts cast. That's true. Um so yeah, so Lushu states, so all of the other five uh, masters are all like, but I'm not the traitor, he must be the traitor. No, I, no, 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 it must be them. And then the spoiler, none of them are actually the traitor, they just start a fight because they're idiots. Sorry, in that way they... they, they wait, that wait, way they I know were, who the traitor is? The, tra the traitor was the fucking leader, because he set the seeds of betrayal by doing this! Uh, only because he basically knew he had to, because he could see the future. If I do this, uh, they'll all fight because uh, uh, I gave it to them and I saw the future that I did it, so it... This is stupid. You also created Dream Eaters. Because they're somehow important. Oh, um, this, this, uh, this is... This is fucking dumb. I mean, I, I should point out the entire reason why Sora doesn't get to see Riku and the King leave at the beginning of the game slash end of 0 0.2 is because he's too busy saying goodbye to all his Dream Eater friends. Yes. Good. I mean, had to go deal with those again. And it's like, well, at least they're not in this game. And not even well, one of them is. Well, not even one of the cool ones. Just the stupid cat. It's the stupid fat balloon dog shit. Well, Couldn't be the big. Dinosaur. He was. Could be the badass T Rex. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was you act like you're surprised it wasn't the stupid one. You, you act like you're surprised that it, that, that it was him. I'm not surprised. Just disappointed. It's so okay. yeah, the box has the something. Others are Norton. So yeah, the box has something dumb in it. It's just a matter of how dumb it. The heart I mean, of hearts. I I mean, didn't we go into this game being like something dumb is going to happen? The only question is how dumb. Yeah. I I know where but the box is specifically from this dumb box. The the box inside the fucking jar of dirt. It's inside the jar of dirt and Pirates of the Caribbean. There was no jar of dirt, because it turns out Pirates... Did you care if I say what Pirate that Pirates World skips Dead Man's Chest? Aww. It just skips no, Dead Man's that. Chest and goes straight to World's End. Probably for but, the best. But I mean, we knew. I mean, I, I mean, I knew that, but, you know... But Jar of Dirt! That's true. No. I knew, that, I knew they were going to skip Dead Man's uh, Chest. 
I got a job. Dad. Sorry, your memes are now dreams. But are there multiple Jack Sparrows? Uh, yes. Is that is that is that the answer to how to do how you defeat Xehanort? You defeat the thirteen Xehanorts by unleashing several dozen Jack Sparrows. Um, they haven't. I don't think so, but well, multiple Jack Sparrows is a thing. And uh, Jack Sparrows VA is a lot better than a Johnny Depp impersonator. That's good. Oh, speaking of VAs, uh, so, I, maybe I, I don't get it, but why do people keep asking for Kyrie's old voice actress back? I don't know, because they're mad. Because Kyrie has not had a consistent voice actress. So, so wait, which one do they want? She had a different one in every game she's been in. Seriously, every game? No, no, she was... The first two games, it two. was... Oh, no, I the think first she had games. The first two games it was Hayden Panettiere, but then after that, like, Kyrie stopped doing anything more than cameos. So... To be fair, after that, Sora and Riku stopped doing things beyond cameos until Dream, That's dream Drop. Well, yeah. I heard that, that too, but I mean... Well, they were also... Well, Riku was in Days. Well, yeah, but... Well, only if briefly. It wasn't, like, super in so. Days. Also, also, her career is much bigger than Haley Joel Osment and, and the David Gallagher's are at the moment. So, but hey, at least we get to expensive. keep Quentin. At least we get to keep Quentin Flynn. Yes, well, he's, uh, he's a. I mean, he's a regular VA as opposed to a like TV star, so that was obvious. Can point out he, that. Oh, sorry. He, he's in fact he's pretty he's pretty much the only major character that has like a, a standard like game slash anime VA and not like a TV actor. But uh, well, he wasn't say, supposed though, to be as important as he was. With uh, with um, with Ky with Kyrie though, like I don't even really like. There's nothing really like she doesn't really have like a significant voice. Is what I'm trying to say. Like she doesn't have like a very specific sound that I hear in my head to give a shit. I mean, the fact that Sora's voice changed as drastically as it did between games. Yes, I know it's puberty, not voice. Kind of tells you. I mean, come on, like, Haley Joel does not sound at all like he does in between one and two. Oh, yeah, no. I knew that even when I, I played it back in the day. But, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's not, like, a specific, like, vocal tick or something to Kyrie. <coughs> the vocal tick is just staying Sora. A lot of actors, a lot of, like, actors, non, like, not voice actors, but actors when they get into voice acting. They don't really, like, do anything for the character to make them have, like, a specific sound to them. Like, Sn a Kiefer Sutherland as Snake is just Kiefer Sutherland. It's just Kiefer Sutherland. Wait, Kiefer Sutherland was in MGS5? Huh. Yeah, yeah, you can hear him talk, like, about five times. Four minutes. So, like, that is, that there's so nothing, sad. like, there's, because it's just his voice... It, like, I can't. I whenever I see Snake, I don't hear Kiefer Sutherland. Like if I see him and like I'm reading him talking, I hear David Hayter because David yeah. gave him a very specific voice. Now tell me about Metal Gear. There's a reason why when people do like Metal Gear jokes or like if they're playing Snake and Smash, they start doing a Snake voice. They don't start trying to impersonate Kiefer Sutherland who just has a normal voice. They start doing David Hayter's Snake. I mean, is that is that? But is that David Hayter? Is that just the memes involved with the voice? Yes. Me. So what the people are doing is they're copying his inflection. Like they might not be able to get his tone, but they copy his inflection and in delivery. Where like there's no specific inflection or delivery in Kiefer or anything with Kyrie for me to like jump out and be like, ah, she does blah blah blah. Versus say like if like uh Michelle like uh, like Michelle Ruff like voicing Rita or other characters that she does. Where there's like a very specific sound to her voice and uh, characters that she's voiced. It's that's kind of why I'm not too big on actors, on like playing, like doing voice acting, because they usually don't really bring anything to the table. Sometimes you, I mean, unless you're Haley Joel, which sometimes they do. Yeah, yeah, no, no, actually, Sora, yes, I will say that Sora does. Even like as he gets older, his voice gets deeper. It still yeah. has like a, a specific inflection that he gives to the character. 
and he also and when he does Vanitas, he also does a good job at sounding like Evil Sora. So you know. Yeah. I am not Ventus. It is I, Evil Ventus. Da -da 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 -da. Then, then, why, then why don't you look any? Why don't you look and sound anything like him? Shut up. Oh, um, fuck off. Tell you. me. Meet the real me in my misfits way of life. But uh, it is I, but... Ansem, the seeker of bees. But yeah, there there are obviously like there are um, exceptions to the rule, but like most of the time when you get like a regular actor doing voice acting, it just at best they'll be do a competent job. Most of the time, at at, at worst, you get uh, Chandler Bing in Fallout uh, New Vegas. Which one does he do? He's the he main the sort of bad guy, the one who shoots you in the face. The one, yeah. Oh yeah, the oh yeah, Max's voice. Yeah. Hey, baby, it is I, Benny. No, it's, it's like Chandler. You, you you hear what I say? You dig? No, it's Chandler. I mean. Yeah. That was, I mean, I mean that was kind of justified by the fact that, like, apparently the backstory is he's just like some like tribal savage guy who like read about how, like, dandy mobsters dress and talk, and he's trying to like mimic it. But oh yeah, no, I'm just making but, fun of the delivery. I mean, I, I mean, I know that, but I mean, there was a reason he was delivering like that. Is yeah, because, yeah. Like, it's because it's because no, no, that I mean, whole like, way of speaking is supposed no, no, no. to be kind of alien to him. He's very. He's very stilted. It's just really funny. Yeah. And then, and then you have like people like Veronica, who's like, "Oh, we have a voice actor here. Hello, how are you doing? Actual voice actor, or someone who's can actually voice act at least." So we. I think. And then, you, no, and then I, you I, have like Aqua, who's a good actress, but somehow doesn't always do a great VA job for some reason. Well, yeah, she's yeah. probably I mean, bug she's probably still traumatized from Arrow. The oh, voice, honestly, the the, the, uh, the one thing, like, when I played uh, Birth I remember Sleep, watching like, Arrow, and I'm, and I'm like, if you can emote here, why can't you emote like this in Kingdom Hearts? When I played Birth... Well, voice acting is very different. In fact, it's a lot harder. But, um... What I was gonna say with Aqua, I remember when I played Birth by Sleep, and she opened her mouth, and that voice came out. I was like, that doesn't fit this character. Like, just immediately, that was my thought. I mean, I kind of got used to it after a while, but, you know... I mean, yeah, I got used to it, but, like... I mean, you can get used to anything. Even, like, you can get even, used the, to even the biggest Medic. Kingdom Hearts fan girl I know like makes fun of how bored Aqua sounds. Like, yeah, no, she sounds bored. Like, she the voice does not fit her. Like, yeah, just, well, just, it could be worse. It, it could be error from Kingdom Hearts One. <laughs> Who? The heiress VA from Kingdom Hearts One. The one they have. The, fe the feeling of the heart. They had a really bad one before they uh, got the. Uh, before they, she yeah. used to talk just like this. Yeah, and then the weird thing is she can voice act now. Oh. Well, She's sometimes too, sometimes too, um, it can be like early role or even direction. Because like, if you want a good example of where direction can be the problem, just play Breath of the Wild. <laughs> You know, like, like I mean, like that, yeah, they, they, it, like yeah, Ma Mandy Moore couldn't voice act very well back then. She can now. Because uh, that's why I was like, it'd be it'd be funny if they just gave her her regular VA back because she's in the game anyway. But is she? I don't uh, think Ar no, I'm no, I mean, I mean, I mean, Mandy Moore is in the game again as Rapunzel, but I actually don't think Eris is in this game. Uh, I'm pretty sure none of Final Fantasy characters are. Yeah, that's. I think that's a big controversy. It's like, man, I wanted to. I mean, there's no Colosseum either. That's, that's the weird one to me. Mm -hmm. I suspect but, uh, it's because uh, of the whole, you know, gameplay thing. Well, gameplay. There's so thing. much. There's no. I mean, there's well, there's so much flash and options in the gameplay now. It'd probably be hard to make a decent Colosseum battle. Yeah. You know. Oh, is it spoiler if I tell you that the Hundred Acre Wood, I think, got massively uh, toned down? No, that fact that it make me very happy. Please tell yeah. me that. It's basically now it's just uh, three mini game. Three mini games are all basically the same. That you can do it all in one shot and it's done. And I kind of I mean, suspect it got toned down so that they could uh, ban it in China or remove it from Chinese copies of the game. Eh, that could be possibly. Was it was it removed in Chinese copies? I don't know. I mean, I'm too lazy to go and look it up. 
but uh I mean that would make sense what was I saying but I but yeah well, I was my, when I saw my Breath of the Wild for voice directing you guys have played Breath of the Wild right yes okay. uh, I, I know the gist of it but no I don't actually have a uh, switch okay um but yeah all the voice actors in that game are actual professional voice actors one of them is also the voice of Sai Nijima in Persona 5 which she did a really good job with also she's the best voice actor in that game with what she's given I but, mean um on the basis that most of the Persona 5 VAs were explicitly people who nobody knew and they didn't have that much experience anyway. I want to say... Wait, what? Sad, wait, what? I wanna, uh, a lot of the Persona 5 VAs weren't like... weren't uh, basically picked because they were relatively unknown or relatively not well known. Yeah. I think okay. Xander, the voice of Joker, was the most well known and that's mostly because he's the Smash. Um, Makoto's voice actress... Well, there, was Matt, there, was Matt, there was Matt Mercer. Oh yeah, Matt, uh, Matt Mercer. A uh, Makoto's voice actress has done a lot. I know that. I just my brain's kind of farting on her name at the moment. Jeremy. I know. Lee. I know. I know. Erica. I just, I just know pe knew. Pe pe people were mad because they wanted Jeremy Lee to be Anne instead, and they're like, "That doesn't fit the character." But I mean, Erica is a perfect works. Anne. <laughs> yeah. It's it's it's, it's it's more it's more from the uh, the initial. For whatever reason, like whatever, whatever, the, whatever lines they picked to, to be in, like the trailers and commercials and stuff, were not the best lines in the game, which led people to assume that the VAing was going to suck. It was actually but, uh, it a was... lot better than they advertised it as. Oh yeah, it was actually really good. Um, but what I was trying to say was that Breath of the Wild has a lot of really good voice actors, which leads me to believe because it's Nintendo and their track record with voice acting isn't the best. So it leads me to believe that they had a shitty director. Or possibly, because sometimes Nintendo does this with uh, non-Fire Emblem titles, they'll get people to direct the English voice actors who are Japanese and don't speak English. Oh yeah, I'm looking at you, that's Other happened. M! That's what happened in Resident Evil. I mean, oh, I think I a large part of that was that yeah. back in the days of like OG Resident Evil, they didn't give a shit because they weren't even sure that things were going to get a Western release. That too. Stop it. Like, Don't open that door. Like the idea was, they just wanted people who were English or could speak English. So yeah, they're, they're like, like no, they're like nobody care, nobody cares about acting quality. It's a video game. Well, it really wasn't until like Metal Gear when like voice acting started kind of having uptick in the uh, video games. Yeah. Well, Metal Gear is the first game I can think of that had like actually good VAing in it, as opposed to just like hiring some hiring the first. Western-looking person they saw outside on the streets in Japan. I'm sure there's another. There's probably a game before it that had good voice acting, but it's did, the most uh, prolific. Did Mega Man Legends one come out before or after uh, Metal Gear? Uh, Metal Gear, Metal Gear Legends one has good voice acting. I know it came out before it, Mega Man Eight and Mega Man X Four, and they had terrible voice acting. Oh yeah, they did. They did. What am I fighting for? <laughs> When you find that meteor, you'll find Dr. Waiwi. I... Bass, we don't have to fight! We are not enemies! Shut up! And then there's the part where he he, call, he almost calls him Rockman and then corrects himself. Rock Mega Man? Like, he's like, like, we gotta g g get it, Ro Me Meg Man. Uh, so which leads me to believe they had one take to do everything, and if they screwed it up, they had to keep it. Oh yeah, I remember that. That's that one that famous Dr. Light setter. Ro M Mega yeah. Man? Yeah. Where he almost calls him Rockman and then corrects himself, and they didn't retake it. That's weird. And, and there's just a guy who's just like, "Good enough. I need to go take a piss." Is it good enough? We only we we can only afford one take. In five minutes, we have a budget of twenty dollars. <laughs> I'm renting this place out. It's my mom's. <laughs> But, yeah, I don't know which one came out first, Legends or Metal Gear. I'm sure there were ones that had decent voice acting before it, but it was the one that kind of, um... was the one that made waves with it. But, uh... Well, let's also not forget, it also had share of goofiness, like Mei Ling, an, an American-born Chinese woman who has a Chinese accent for no reason. And they, they, they didn't realize that until they went to the remake. They're like, wait... Why did we give her this accent? She's from fucking California. Yeah, Why did well. we give her the racist accent? Well, you know. 
happens. And then, and then that voice is the one that she's had since then, where she just sounds Look, like a normal Dan, person. This was back she doesn't before sound like a fucking raging that, stereotype. Dan, this was back before the uh, people realized the the truth that you know all races were equal, but more specifically, the Chinese had money. That too. And therefore, we can't make fun of them. We have to empower them, because then we get their money. That's more of a modern thing. I'm not, the, even they were changing voices. Just literally the uh, team being like, "This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> this, this is stupid." Why did she do from, this? She's from California. Why? Why did we do this? The funny thing is, there was an Asian VA. So yeah. I feel like yeah, yeah, do a racist accent of. of I mean that happens. Okay. I mean that happens. Like remember that weird accent that the girl from uh, that one uh, Transformers uh, show had. The Japanese girl who had that weird accent. Oh, 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 oh yeah, because she was Filipino. But like she was trying she had... to do a different accent at the same time, so it just sounded yeah. really weird. Yeah, that was that was interesting. And I quite interesting. I mean, yeah, I didn't I mean, really like did... that prime either. So. <coughs> Unfortunately, you didn't. Yeah, you didn't miss. But by the time, it was like by the time it finally started to get good again, then it was like, oh, but the show is already over. The kids pissed me off too much, so I just was like, fuck this. They eventually dialed back on the kids, but it was a little too late. Prime's biggest what? problem is that, is that like, they'd set up story arcs that they'd immediately resolve in, like, one episode. Like, they spent, <laughs> like, they, like, the whole mech thing with, like, the human enemies. That, like, they slowly built up over the course of two seasons, and then, like, he, and then, like, he just, they, they did their one master plan, it failed, and they all died. And that was the end of that. In, in the course of one episode, like the entire organization was wiped out. And I was like, oh, okay, that was it. Oh, God, this is like this is like the Transformers equivalent of blue balls. Jesus Christ! I wish we could. It reminded me. Oh, sorry. It reminded me of Beast Wars with how like whenever whenever they needed to introduce a character, they had to kill off another because oh, uh, yeah. they could they could only have, I guess they could only have like so many CGI models in the show or something. So like probably uh, the rendering. Were just Characters the would randomly dropped it. Like yeah, like um the, the one guy like the one guy with the hammer who was like Bulkhead's friend who was like Bulkhead's old friend turned evil or something. And then in one episode just he just randomly gets killed. Like in the beginning of the episode, just like he's gone. Like but but what about all that stuff What about all that stuff you were you were you were hinting about with his backstory and like, you know, the plot you nope, he's gone. Have another have this ah, other character instead. We, we got we got bored. Yeah. We got bored. Now, now watch th this uh, this reckless, too dumb to live girl <laughs> jump into a bullet. I was always more creeped out of the relationship between RC and her human partner. Oh, that was creepy. I didn't even want to talk about it. Where, it's so fucking weird. And then when her mother is like, "Oh man, Optimus Prime is my is completely is my type." Yeah. Then it's like no. I just wanted to, I just wanted to fit in. It's like no. Don't leave. Leave. Stop this. Why? Why you do this, Prime? Oh, and then Unicron was the Earth. <laughs> yes, Unicron was. Unicron was the. Unicron was the Earth. Are you they fucking couldn't... serious? Yes. yes. Unicron was the Earth. This sounds like like you know like the um the fucking um John Freeman, Gordon Freeman's brother. That's what this sounds like to me. And then Unicron was the Earth. It should be. I prefer Gordon Froman. Gordon Froman. Yes, Unicorn. Yeah, Unicron was the Earth, which meant that he couldn't actually wake up because otherwise he'd kill everyone. So he just showed up as like a stone statue. He, he like he he carved a, ver a version of his robot mode out of a mountain. And what was what was the point of this show? And then Optimus Prime got amnesia. Uh, yeah, the Prime got amnesia and... Did they hire like fan fiction writers and like uh, fucking no, like worse. soap opera writers? Uh, no worse, Robert Orchi, Roberto Or Orsi. Who's that? He's the guy who was in charge of write, like writing, what producing the Trans Bayformers movies. Oh, oh, oh! So this is him without the leash. I mean, uh, you would also argue it's him without the shackle. I, I think he might have been better with the shackle on. Uh, no, Prime is still it's, infinitely it's, it's... more coherent than any of those movies are. Yeah, like, I mean, it's still an improvement. Like, I mean, Unicron be... being done poorly is, like, whatever. Like, 
we've seen enough of Unicron. Like it, gonna... it, made a lot, it made a lot of mistakes, but it was still better than Bayformers. I mean, you can argue it's still better than half of the than like half of the animes. Better than Enjon, at least. At least this one was properly animated. Oh, and they didn't just Enjon. give up halfway through. Yes, forget it. Look out for the satellite that we did, forgot to put in the scene. It was like, it was like there's a satellite, um, but we didn't animate it yet. Well, <laughs> throw it in there anyway. Was it the sequel that had Kicker, the Jesus of Humanity? Yes. Yes, that was it. Okay. And like, and the, and they they were so eager to get it like just done that like. They wouldn't even wait for the episode to be finished animating before they'd air it. Which led to the infamous space station that wasn't actually animated in the exterior shots, so they just randomly cut to an exterior shot of empty space. <laughs> yep. This is making me think of, like, when I was watching, uh, like, like, Best of the Worst, and there was, like, a, this one movie where never, and they were fighting, and they randomly cut to something, and in one of the fights, uh, they randomly cut to an empty living room. And then they come oh. back to the fight. Oh, is that the one that came out just today? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was. I watched that earlier as well. Yeah, it's kind of like that. The best one was also <laughs> just the dull surprise meme. That was great. <laughs> Where all the transformers had the exact same expression. Oh. Just like open mouth. Yes. Oh. It can literally be anything. Huh. Oh. Uh, yeah, the job was dumb, but. Better than Bayform, which, is too, still. which is too bad because it, it, uh, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think Cybertron was better. It was just weird. Cybertron was better, but by then it was one. The damage was done, and two, Cybertron was like not connected to the first two, but the the dub tried to act like it was. Then, oh yeah, yeah. And then they had Jetfire go to Space Australia to get an accent. And, oh yeah, and, didn't and they, they like? They, didn't they like um have like? One character that looks kind of like one of the kids from Armada, and just said that, "Oh yeah, that's that's that character." Then they do something like that. I don't know about that. They might. Well, I don't know because I know I know the the dub like actually had them animate new sequences where like the characters from Energon and Armada were shown in the ending somehow. And the, the, yeah, their their just yeah their their justification was the Unicron singularity. Whenever Unicron shows up. He he messes with reality, so any of the any of the problems from any of the continuity problems are a cause of Unicron. Oh that right, was that was that time when they did this whole bizarre thing, where they claimed that Unicron and like all of his ilk were basically like these singular entities across every single incarnation. So like every incarnation of Unicron was all actually the same robot. Somehow. Yes. Good. Even though he lost all the time, they were all the same guy. And that was also the same for the Fallen. So the badass Fallen from the comic books, who's like perpetually on fire, is somehow the same guy as the old man who got beat in two seconds. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Bay didn't care. I, Bay didn't care, but like the continuity guys are like, oh no, we're not letting you get away with this. No, it's the same guy somehow. I forget. I forget what their just. I think. I think their justification was he was just so tired of that universe that he just he wanted out. Be fair. I'm so tired of this universe too. Well, we don't have to worry about that anymore because you know, Bumblebee. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. You're right. It's over now. So Bumble. So Bumblebee was a prequel to a Bayformers that they suddenly realized. In post production, that you know nobody likes Bayformers anymore, and the last one bombed, so there's not going to be any more Bayformers. We better change this to a reboot, but we can't actually change the movie that's already been shot. So we're just going to clumsily edit out any references to uh, Megatron frozen under Hoover Dam, and we'll add a beginning and ending Cybertron sequence where none of the characters except Bumblebee look like Bayformers. Yes. I'm okay with that. I'm completely okay with that. I mean, so am I, but still. It was rather clumsily done. To be fair, it's probably still more elegant than the entirety of any of the Bayformer, any of the Bayformer oh. movies. Probably. Or my sentence there. 
Well, but, having uh, not seen it, I can't really say, but... I mean, beating out a Bayformer's movie isn't exactly hard. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure, what, I'm pretty sure, like, almost anybody with a camera could, like, anyone, no, not with a camera, we're talking about writing. Anyone with a fucking typewriter, no, no, a pencil, could write a more elegant script than I don't know, a Shane, former. I don't know, Shane Black couldn't. Who's that? The uh, guy who did The Predator. Oh my god. At least, Bay never tried to weaponize autism. He never got a chance. Oh, he had chances. Oh, uh, he pro well, no, Bay doesn't like Remember, he get had the new two, ideas. He had the two uh, bots from um, Revenge of the Fallen. Yeah, yeah, but here's they were. The thing. They must have been some kind of cyber autistic. Here's the thing, though. Uh, Bay doesn't come up with new ideas. He just takes ideas he saw, and then uses those. Hmm. So now that he's seen it, maybe like in the new Ninja Turtles. Um, They'll be like, a Donatello will make an autism-powered ray gun or something. Because he's still doing Ninja Turtles, right? I don't know. I didn't even think Ninja Turtles uh, was still happening. I thought they died. Which, wait, which, which, which Ninja Turtles? The, the movies? Some movies. Oh, no, I think they're done. The, uh, the second one didn't do that great, apparently. I'm Which is too bad, because it was honestly closer to the 80s cartoon than any of the movies had ever been. I mean, the damage was done with the first movie, so yeah. people weren't going to watch it. Also, the Transformers. I mean, it's like yeah, the Transformers stigma. But I mean, it was actually, I mean, I watched it. It, it was, uh, I mean, I, I, I hesitate to say it was It was good because... It was better than was, you expected? Was it, was be it, was be yeah, it was better than I feared. It was... It was watchable. It was watchable. It was it was okay ish. It was it was okay ish. There were a couple of points where I was like, oh wow, I'm surprised they threw that in there. Okay, that was kinda cool. But you know most of the time like when they they drive in, in the turtle van and shoot and actually shoot manhole covers at somebody, I'm like, Oh, I can't believe they went that far. That was kind of silly. But at the same time That's what they that, that was actually like straight up one of the toys. Yeah. Or like Bebop I mean, uh, and Rocksteady finally being a thing. I mean, around the time you have a fucking group of teenage mutant ninja turtles, you kind of have to throw silly out the window. Throw the concept of that's too silly out the window. And, St yeah. and Stephen and Mel and Stephen and Mel in it was still better than uh, the several seasons of Arrow. I mean, that's not also not very I mean, difficult. Yeah. He just has to. He just has to be uh, fucking Casey Jones, who's just a chub with a hockey stick. I yeah. still hate though that they they looked at the arrow they looked at Green Arrow the uh, the lighter version of Batman who's more like goofy and makes jokes and is more lighthearted and we're like what if we just didn't do any of that no what, what they did just... was they looked at it and went we want to do Batman DC said no you can't do Batman okay and then they looked at the list of characters they were allowed to do and saw that Green Arrow was kind of like Batman well it was also a not it was also a not spin off of Smallville like. To the point where they almost went with the actor who was Green Arrow on Smallville before deciding to just reboot the whole thing. Oh, and in Smallville, like how... Green, Ar Green Arrow was basically like, well, we want Batman, but we can't have Batman, so we'll just use Green Arrow instead. Yeah. Basically what I said. Except, well, yeah, except he was actually closer to the actual Green Arrow. Yeah, because he was more jokey, because he was still kind of yeah. jokey and shit. <laughs> Even though, like, Smallville in general felt less like a Clark story and more like a Superboy story. Uh, I mean, I think you, know, you mean it was less of a Clark story, more of a Lana Lang story. <laughs> For yeah, but that, that but that they eventually wised up to the fact that you know she's make, we got to get rid of this character. I mean, it was a little too late at that point, but the last two seasons were fairly decent because she wasn't there. But uh, you know what I'm saying, though, right? Yeah. And then the last season, they just started throwing in all these random cameos, like. Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. Like, why? Why do we need these guys? Okay. Like, we only have one season left. We're just throwing in whatever we can. They're probably like, please, please, green light one of these. We want money still. Don't let let yeah. us go. Yeah, and they got Arrow instead. Oh boy.
If only they didn't. But they did. And then they got Arrow, and then they made Flash, and then they made Supergirl, and then I cried. To be fair, Supergirl was originally a CW thing. Yeah. It just became that because it was so bad. That's became, well, no, well, no, it, it be, no, it became that because she was friends with Grant Gustin. And they were like, man, wouldn't it be funny if our characters team up? And then they were like, we can, we, and then they were like, we can do this, we think. And then, like, it was apparently very highly rated. And then and afterwards, they were like, well. Oh, it we was like Supergirl's anymore, so. most highly rated episode. And it was also fucking garbage. Oh well, yeah, I know that. But I what? I know because that was the season I was watching. Because I thought maybe this show won't suck. Maybe. And then, oh, every, time, go. And then every new episode, it was like, wow, wow, I died more. I died today. I'd like to interrupt this uh, making fun of CW to let, inform you that it is fight three with the fucking old man. It's time to beat him up again. This, this hasn't been interesting in a while, game. Uh, Seriously, knock this shit off. It's not right to abuse your elders. Let's especially just in Japan. Again. Hey, especially in Japan, yeah. <clears throat> it's time for another Kuze fight. You might as well just have him like fly off like Team Rocket after you beat him up. Looks like Kuze is blasting off again! You know, the, you know the funny thing is, in the in the Japanese version of Pokemon, that line is just "I feel bad." Man, that's lame. I know. No wonder they changed it. Yeah. I'd be honest. Apart from the uh, egregious examples of like changing uh, rice balls into donuts, people I've often heard that the Pokemon dub is generally better, just because it is more uh, jovial. Yeah, that's true. It's pretty. It's pretty generic in Japan. And that's partly same, why. At the same ah, time, the ja at the same time, the Japanese music is usually better and. Ah, really so they... it's, uh, it's more. It's more boring. Uh, just like uh, just like the original Japanese script for Resident Evil fucking four. Mm. <clears throat> but um, yeah. I mean, I get the impression the Pokemon anime is something. That We'll do more out of obligation than anything these days. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a uh, it's an advertising vehicle. That's what they've even said that. It's that an advertising vehicle. So it doesn't need fucking advertising. Yeah. What do you mean? I mean Who, Pokemon is such an obscure franchise. Even even the anime is like starting to get like the 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 sun and moon season. They kind of just gave up on like the whole you know like gyms and tournament plot because they're like well. I mean the games also gave up on that. I mean, but I mean, the games also gave up on that too. But I mean, they were just like, well, clearly we're never going to be able to do anything with this. So now it's just, uh, I think it's like Ash just goes to school now. Yeah, Ash, Ash goes to school and then like goes on random field trips, basically. With his Hawaiian friends, but not Stitch. His Hawaiian friends, and not Stitch. And then there was randomly an episode where they went back to Kanto and met up with all those characters again. Ohana means family, Sabo. Yes. Man. God damn it. Good old Stitch. Good old Stitch. No punch, brother! No punch backs! So wait, if Japan doesn't like Hawaii, why did they go to Hawaii in Persona 5? Um, Because they don't see any Hawaiians there. Yeah, they do. No, you don't. What about that one guy that gives you the shrimp who was like the most stereotypical Hawaiian I've ever seen? That's no, he's just from um, they said Portugal. He's just one of isn't those he like big... a, is, isn't he like a fat tan guy with a lay? No, yeah, he is. He's, it's which is, he's which is basically your, your typical Hawaiian. No, he's Waka's cousin. Oh. Baka. Cousin, yeah. I hope you're not an El Bed, ya! Yeah? Hope you're not an El Bed with your those spiral eyes. I don't know what they look like, but I hate them. <laughs> That's it's like, you know, those damn El Beds. I don't know what they actually look like or what they do, but screw them anyways. You know, they they don't have the racism angle, but you know how we were talking last time about how uh, Symphonia has a very similar plot to um, uh, was it to Ten? 
Yeah. Um, what was it? There was another... What was it? I think... Oh, was it? There's also... Actually, like, Zestria has a similar plot in a way, but with the more on the nose of the shrines thing. But, uh... Why? What are they racist against? But they're, no, they're, no, there's nothing racist in Zestria, though. That's why I said... I'm guessing, I'm guessing they're, not, they're not racist. Against. They can't be racist against the spirit people, because nobody can see them, except one guy. Yeah, like, literally, like... Except for, like... Like 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 two, like a handful of people. I like when um Rose can't quite see them, but she can hear them, so they just fuck with her. Well, and by they I mean Edna because she's the best character. Because <laughs> the rest are like, no, no, don't make jokes. No, no, I'm gonna pretend I'm a ghost. Like, no, I'm serious. This is serious business. Like, the only uh, gag that the, the fire one does is just that she likes bad jokes. She likes she likes bad jokes and she can't, like, tell anything straight to anybody. I, I did, though I won't lie, the, the time I thought that her bad joke bit was funny was when she made a bad joke, and then in the background, you can hear Dezel laughing, and Rose going, wait, you found that funny? <laughs> and he's just going, no! Shut up! I'm laughing I at like, you, not with you. I just wish that they put in some of the more conflicting characters earlier. Because especially when you had, like, uh, when it was, like, Saray, uh, her, Miklio, and then the, the most boring chick in the game, it was like, okay, we're all on the same page, and there's no, like, inner banter other than Miklio is Sundari for Saray, and that's it. And then they become very gay for each other. Yeah. And then the the anime just the anime just goes full out like, not only are they very gay for each other, but Rose and Alicia are now too. Because that was the be because that was the only thing they could come up with to do with Alicia. Yeah. Or the best thing they could come boring. up with. Fucking boring. People will sit there and with... tell me that she's like this great character, and I'm like, what game did you play? Because she's so fucking boring. Well, like, she's not around. She's not lo around long enough to be interesting. But I mean, like they say, like they're talking about her in that game. Like, oh, she's so so interesting. She's my favorite one. I'm like, she's boring. She doesn't do anything. Like, I can't even say she's vanilla because that would imply shade of flavor. She's just there, and then she goes away. You don't see her again. But they reference her here and there. And then she comes back for like two minutes, and then leaves again. And then there's a whole DLC about her where she and Rose are gay for each other and have a cat fight. Yeah, and she do. I, I, I like that. I like that they can't seem to come up with a part for her beyond well, let's let's just let's just make her Yuri with the only other prominent female character in the game. I mean, if it works. Kind of doesn't though. It didn't. No, there it didn't. But people were so desperate for anything with her that like, like, they were just like, like okay, Saray okay. and Miklio worked. Like Saray and Miklio worked, and like they danced around it a bit in the game. In the anime, they're like, yeah, it is. And the creator, even like after the game came out, said like, yeah, they're totally gay for each other. Um, and I'm cool with that. Like it, they they work. The Rose Alicia one is definitely like, uh, let's give Alicia something, I guess. Here, we'll just pin her to Rose. Like, well, what, like, what we else go. are we going to do? Abandon it? <laughs> like you should? Just yeah. leave her in a dumpster somewhere? Well, like, well, like, well, like, well, what else What else do we do with Rose? I think, you, I mean, you could have just ended it where it did. She was good on bantering with the other characters. She's a good side character. Didn't need to give her a, a fucking romance. And then they gave us Berseria after that instead. Thank God. <laughs> With the edgiest, the, of edgy, the edgiest of edgy characters. They're edgy, but they're still funny. Like it's not like say like when a lot of games do an edgy character, they're still silly. And they still like make cracks at the characters too. Oh yeah, and the game the like, game goes on about just how absurd all of this edges like they don't like they're like yeah like R velvet is an edgy character but she doesn't feel like you're like your typical like shitty edgelord 
And I actually think I was thinking about this the other day. Every character except for like Aizen and Rokuro go through character development. Rokuro can't. <laughs> he just literally can't. I want to kill my brother. That's that's because his character. Because of the, the weird way demons are. Because the weird way demons are, he literally can't. And Aizen's just like, nope, this is who I am the entire time. I'm, the rest no, all go through development though. Yeah, but Aizen's I mean, they're still good. That's okay. Yeah. They're still good characters. Um. But uh, he's like, he's like, I'm gonna get this coin to Lin on the other on the other side this time. Flip. Then a ship's cannon randomly fires at it. Oh, that's unlucky. <laughs> oh yeah, that the fucking uh one where they keep using different coins is one of my favorite fucking bits. <laughs> they're like, ha! I figured it out, and then they're like, ha ha! I'm cheating. We, ha uh, ha! I got a double sided coin. Oh fuck! I got more. Ah fuck! I got more. <laughs> And it just increasingly got worse and worse to how the luck would stop it from landing on heads, even though it was a double-sided coin. Man, what's their next Tales game? I, I, I am curious to see what they do after or this. Are they, or, or are they just going to do gotchas forever now, like everyone else? <laughs> uh, they did announce, uh, like they had like a name for a new Tales game, but I, the, other than that, we don't know anything. But, uh, I am interested to see what they do. Um, Berseria is so good, I'm, this might sound like a dick, I'm not expecting the next one to be as good. I, I'm just expecting it to at least be decent. Most of them are usually it, decent, except yeah. a couple. Uh, the only ones that, like, I, like, I can't say, the only one I could say I, like, straight up didn't like was that one on PS2 that I mention all the time. Uh, uh the others like either I haven't played or... Yeah, Legendia. that one. The other one. Yeah. The other ones I haven't either. I either haven't played or just weren't quite as good as the ones I usually bring up. And that's that's about it. But they're still good. Like literally, like Legendia is the only one where I just yell at you and say, "Hey, don't don't fucking don't don't bother with this. Put it in a trash can. If you find it, throw it in a trash can. Do the world a favor. To be safe, smash the disc." But uh, anyway, we're about at time, so I think we'll call it's it here. It's about that time, then. Yep. See, see you guys next time for more of us rambling about whatever damn dumb shit we think about. Probably and, would uh, be, probably be in Kingdom Hearts once me and Sebo finished it. Yeah, they'll have finished it, and I'll, I'll just be sitting here like, I'm playing Vesperia. <laughs> 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 All right, have a good night.